Now I've set up my project as well as my topic. I'm ready to start creating contents inside my topic, which will consist of flashcards and challenges. So flashcards are informational. Uh, they don't require action from the players. So that's quite straightforward. What I'm going to move on to instead is the challenges. So you can see on Gamatize, we have 10 different types of challenges on the platform available for you to choose from. Alternatively, if you're not really sure where to start, you can also select something from our challenge template, in which case you can preview the templates that we've already created. Uh, see if there's anything here that catches your eye. If it does, you can press use template and port it straight away into your topic. So in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a standard challenge where I'm going to get the players to introduce themselves in the game. This one's good for um, free text entry as well as optionally uploading a photo. So when you start creating a challenge, you can see the very first part is very similar to uh, a topic project where it asks you to create an image, title, and description. So I'll just do that now. All right, so I finished creating my challenge image, title, and description. Now I'm going to move on to the points settings. Okay, for point settings, this is the number of points your player can earn for this challenge completion. So the first one is basic points, which is further divided into completions and then votes. And then the second component is bonus points. So for completions, this is how many points they can earn just for completing this challenge. So you can see right now I've set it to 100. So a person will gain 100 points just for completing this. And then the second part is votes. So you can see that uh, I've put 1, then 100 here, but by default it's 0, meaning that for some challenges, other players can vote on other players' submission. And in this case, if I've set it to 1, it means that for every single vote, that this player receives from other players on their completion, they'll get one point each. But if I want to limit the number of points that they can gain from voting, uh, so for example, I don't want it to be that this player has, they managed to get 200 friends onto the app uh, to vote on this particular submission to farm points, then I can limit this to 100. Meaning that after uh, 100 votes have been um, received by this player on this particular submission, uh, they will have reached the points cap for voting. They're not going to be able to get more than 100 points just from votes. All right, so the second part is bonus points. This is completely optional. You can leave this blank. Uh, so what it is, is a, it's an extra incentive for players who um, to kind of come here, be the first to the finish line to complete this challenge. So um, for example, I want the first 10 players who complete this challenge to receive an extra 200 points meaning that these players will receive two, uh, 100 points just for completing the challenge and then an extra 200 points for being one of the first 10 players to complete it. So it means that after the, I'm the, if I'm the 11th player, I would only just get the basic 100 points and that's also not counting the points I would receive from votes from other players. So that's the point settings in a nutshell. Now we're going to move on to advanced settings. So for advanced settings, there's uh, scheduling and frequency settings. So then uh, frequency means how, how often may players complete this challenge. So by default, it's usually set to only once, meaning that after they've completed it one time, they can't do it again. But in the case of uh, if you want it to be a repeatable challenge, so for example, it's an exercise challenge where you want them to take a photo of themselves exercising every day, then you can set this to 24 hours. After 24 hours, the challenge will reset and then players can come again and then complete again, earn points again. So I'm going to leave this at only once. And then I can also um, set the expiry settings for this particular challenge. So what expiry for a challenge means is that um, after it meets a certain condition, uh, it's going to expire, meaning that it's no longer able to be completed. It's still on the platform, but uh, the button will change to say that it's expired. So how can you trigger a challenge expiry is in one of two ways. Either you can set it by the date, so for example, let's say 21st October, and then at a certain time as well. So you can see uh, that it's GMT plus zero. Make sure that you uh, do all the correct cal calculation and that it hits your time zone correctly. And then uh, the other one is 
by maximum completions, meaning that uh, after a certain number of people have completed it, then it will expire. So let's say after 2,000 uh, challenge completions on this, um, this challenge will expire. Okay, I'm going to still leave it at unlimited. Okay, so we also have a scheduling uh, challenge setting. So what that means is that if you've created a lot of challenges at once, but you don't want to be manually going in to publish them at a set time, you want it to be published once an hour, every hour, then you can schedule the time that you want your challenge to be published. So once again, remember that this is the time zone that Gametize is configured to, so just do the calculation on uh, your own end for your own time zone. Okay, so now we're going to move on to more settings. So more settings has um, several different things. The first one is message to display after a player completes challenge. All right, so that's my message to display after a player completes my challenge. Uh, I also have the option to set a private completion. So what private completions are is it will make the contents of player completions hidden to others. Uh, so for example, if I have set a challenge where I ask players to rate other players in their game, maybe I don't want other players to be looking in and seeing what's their opinion of uh, other players. So in which case I can keep that private, meaning that, for example, it will show Prepim has submitted something, but other players won't be able to see what I wrote. But I'm going to keep this public because I don't mind other players uh, seeing the submissions by others. I won't go through admin-only completions. That one is a setting that I can cover in a later video. And then I can also tick um, to send notifications via email or notifications. So this, of course, assumes that your game is already live and you're adding new content. Since my game is not even live yet, uh, this is not going to make any difference. So I'm going to just uh, keep this unchecked for now. So I also have the option to lock this challenge. So you can allow your players to unlock this challenge only when they've met a rule. Uh, this is great for if you want it to be a, an exclusive challenge to make players complete something before they're able to access it. So if I tick this, make this locked, um, the platform will ask me to set a rule for unlocking this challenge. So for example, uh, completing a previous challenge existing in the topic at least X number of times or earning at least X number of points in a, another challenge. Okay, so, but in my case, I'm going to deselect this. I don't need the lock rule just yet. And then I also have the option to embed content. So what this means is that I can pull a URL of another resource. So for example, websites, uh, YouTube videos, Vimeo, or MP4 URLs, or also PDF documents or presentations. So you can read the rules uh, here for what will work and what won't. So for example, uh, for PDF or presentations, you need to make sure that the URL ends with the .pdf extension. And then just to note that for websites, um, not everything will be able to be embedded. Some websites have disabled embedding. So you can try this out for yourself and see what works. So in my case, I'm actually just going to embed the Gametize website for you to see. So the last thing you can do is also embed a map. So this is just a location recommendation. So for example, if it were a particular challenge that was set in Singapore, you could put this here for Singapore. Okay, so I don't really need a map for mine. So now I'm done with my challenge settings and I'll just save. Okay, so now you can see my challenge is ready. You can see all of the settings for it. It's a standard challenge that's currently locked. And then it awards up to 300 points. The players may only do this once as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a few more challenges in this topic of different challenge types, different number of points to be earned, and different settings. All right, so I finished adding a few more challenges just to show you how a more complete topic would look like. What I've gone ahead to do is that I've created uh, two more challenges. One is a fixed answer challenge. Uh, what are two words you can say to express gratitude? So in this case, the player has to input the exact answer, which is thank you, and then they'll get the points. And then I've also created a photo challenge where uh, I'm asking the player to upload a photo of themselves striking a charismatic pose. And then you can see in this case that I've made these locked. 
So they have to complete, hello, tell us about yourself, which is the first challenge we created. And then they'll be able to unlock these two challenges below.